think I've been making you wait long enough. It's time for us to go in and build our very first course within our LMS. Let's start getting some content in there. So to do this, what we're gonna do is go down on our left hand um, administration bar there, open that up and we'll go to site administration and we're gonna to navigate to where we were before with our course categories. So I'm gonna go across to the third tab along and click courses. We'll go into manage courses and categories. Now in my case, I'm gonna use my induction folder that I had, my induction category that I created before and I'm gonna build this course in the 2018 category. So I expand out my subcategories and I then click on the name 2018 to open it up in the right hand side. So I'm actually looking within that folder or within that drawer, however you wanna call it. Um, so I'm looking within that subcategory. So I'm now gonna move across to create new course. So I'm gonna click the create new course link here and it's gonna take me into the create new course settings. Now when I'm building a new course, there's two required fields. There's two things that I must fill out and that is a course full name and a course short name. So my course full name is gonna be induction 2018. <clears throat> I'll put that in there. And my short name is going to be induction 2018 as well. Oops. All right, so now what is the difference? So induction, um, sorry, so just finish that. So the full name for a particular course, that is actually what's gonna to display to the end user. It's what's gonna display out on the home page. It'll be potentially what displays on an automatic generated certificate, what's at the title of the course, those sort of things. So it's the thing that the end user sees. The short name, however, is basically the database term for this course. So it's what the database recognizes this course as. Again, particularly if we're using um, bulk CSV uploads and you're enrolling somebody into a course, the short name is very important. The short name also does appear in the breadcrumbs when a user is within the course. So it is important that you have something that is meaningful in there because the users will see that short name when they look at the breadcrumbs. I often say as a rule of thumb that your short name should be, you should be able to identify a course by the short name alone. So make sure you do give it a really meaningful name. So often I will call it the, like the course, then maybe dash the year, maybe dash the teaching period or whatever it might be, just so it's nice and easily identifiable for you. Now the rest of the options through setting up a course are quite self-explanatory. Um, and that's what I really love about Moodle. You don't need to be afraid of any of these sort of things because they, you have lots of options and there's lots of information there to support what's actually going on. So if you do make a mistake, all you need to do is edit the settings of that particular course and just fix it up, tweak it back to the way that you wanted it to. So did you put it into the right category? If you accidentally messed that up, no worries, just change it here. Would you like the course shown or hidden? from the start, so when you create it. Sometimes it's really good to hide the course initially whilst you're developing the content, getting everything ready, because whilst a course is hidden, no students or learners can see it. So you can still get into it as an admin, you can still add to it, you can still view it and make sure that it's all correct, but students can't see it. and um, They don't even know that it exists. Do you wanna set a course start date and an end date? So is there a relevant period in which you want the course to start end from? Um, the end date doesn't really uh, do a lot as far as it's not gonna unenroll students at that end date, but it will actually remove it from the available courses list um, for students once the end date is passed. So it will, it will drop off um, their available list there. You might wanna add a course ID number. So maybe your course is a, a, a registered course, or something like that, and you want to have an official ID number that's associated with it. Some of our system integrations will also reference that ID number as well when we're doing sort of syncs across external systems. But obviously, if that is something that was required, we would talk to you about that as we go. <clears throat> the next section along here is our description. So we have a course summary and a course summary file. Now these two sections actually control and dictate what actually happens out on the course tile. So just so I can explain this to you, I'm just gonna um, quickly open up my homepage in a new tab just to show you what I mean by this. So what I'm looking at here on my homepage is this image is my course summary file. Here is the full name of my course, and here is the course summary there. So that's basically what that is. So if I close this and I go back to my section here, so under the description um, area here, here's my course summary. So I can type in the description that I want to give a bit of the users a bit of an overview about what my course is about. And here is the course summary file, that typical Moodle, Moodle drag and drop box that we looked at earlier on in these videos. So we've got the instructions at the top right here. So we'll only accept a maximum one file, obviously, because we can only have the one photo. 
Now these files can also be animated. Um, so in most cases, uh, most people use like a JPEG or a PNG, but it can also be an animated GIF as well. I have had people actually use animated um, GIFs before just to get a bit of movement and a bit more interest onto the page there. So you're very welcome to use that. And you're literally just dragging and dropping that one file into there. Now your next option, which I suppose is your next main option when you're developing a course, is well, what course format do you want to actually use? What, which, which one is you going to appeal to you? Now out of the box, Moodle has four course formats and they're the bottom four in this list here. So we have a single activity format, um, very commonly used for when you want a course that is nothing but a forum or nothing but a SCORM package, for example. We have a social format, which is very much around communication around the forum type activities. And then the most frequently used and the most flexible options is a topics format or weekly format. There's not a lot of difference between how those two behave, except that one um, numbers all its sections topic one, two, three, four, and so on. And the other one numbers its sections with week date ranges. So it'll say from the first to the seventh, and then the eighth until the 15th or whatever it is. Um, so it'll just number the sections differently, but otherwise it doesn't really um, affect that either of the both of them work the same way. Now they do give you the most flexibility and this is the one that I'm going to use today um, because it allows me within a topics format, I can have multiple sections, as many as I like. It also means I can have as many activities and resources as I, as I like. So I can have forums, PowerPoints, quizzes, assignment activities, as right down to certificates at the end as well once a user completes it. Whereas if I was to use a single activity course, I'm stuck to just the one activity. So they have their place, just depending on what your intended outcome is. So with that topics format, I get to pick um, how many sections I would like default out of the box, but you're not locked in. Again, there's nothing that you're sort of committed to here. So you can pick two sections here. Um, you can pick four, you can pick 10 if you want. And once you get into the course and start developing your resources and developing out how you're gonna want it, if you want more or want less, you can alter it right from within the course itself. Do you want the hidden sections? So Moodle gives you the ability to hide these sections or hide any sections you like within a course. So this next question is asking you, would you like them to be shown just in a collapsed format? Meaning that the user can still see that that section exists, but they can't get to it. Um, so I personally always like having them completely invisible. Because generally if I hide something, the whole purpose of that usually is that I don't want the person or anybody else to know that it's there. And the last option in this section is the course layout. So would I like all these sections displayed on the one page, so it's a maybe a long continuous scrolling page, or would I like one section per page, which sort of in a way creates a bit of a book-like feel. So they'll focus on topic one, they'll then click next page and they'll move on to topic two and so on. Once again, these are all things that you can change as you go. So pick one to start off with and then come back and toggle between them if you're wanting to see how they behave. But I'm gonna look at um, keeping them all on the one page. We expand out the next tab, which is appearance. So that's just talking about whether or not you wanna force a language, um, whether or not you're wanting students to be able to see their own grade book within this course, or maybe it's not one that you want them to be able to see in those type of items. Files and uploads. So this is where we can change the maximum file size um, per file of uploads that can be made onto this site. Now just remember uploads is um, uploads from yourself as a teacher or an admin, but it's also uploads from a student as well. <clears throat> so um, if you set an assignment activity, for example, and students have to submit videos, you just need to be cautious about that. Um, often people will keep the site upload um, limit and will be at the site limit. Um, but we do have some people that want to restrict it, particularly when they're dealing with people adding country and remote areas with smaller internet connections. They limit the upload size just to sort of make it a bit easier on those people with uh, limited internet connections. We have completion tracking. Now I always recommend it's really important to leave this set to yes or to set it to yes if it's not already. Um, this is what enables uh, course completion and activity completion to be used within our course. Now, even if you're not gonna use them, it's still just as easy to have this functionality turned on uh, because at least it's there if you need it. Um, if you ever notice that it's missing, often this is where it is, it's come from this because people have left this set to no um, and now they can't find the functionality that they were looking for. So it's really good to keep completion tracking turned on um, and then that way it's there if you need it. Now we do have more videos in this series that do explain about um, activity completion and course completion as well so that um, you can further understand what I'm talking about when I mention that. 
We have groups, so the ability to set up this course for an entire the entire course to be group work all the time. Um, I often leave this set to no groups at this level, and then I will turn on group mode on individual activities if I'm wanting people to work uh, in groups within that. We have the ability to rename the roles just at a singular course level. Um, the main reason why I've seen this before is when courses have been taught in different languages and different cultures, they've wanted to rename, for example, you know, teacher may not be called a teacher in another culture. And for this particular course, to match that particular culture, they would like it to be called the relevant name that suits that, that, um, that environment. So it just gives you the ability. This does not rename the role throughout the system. It's simply renaming this role just for that particular course. And the last one is tags. So tags is a basically, again, just like we had with interests on a user's profile page, we have the ability to tag every single course within our Moodle site so that users can actually use the tags as a search function. So maybe this particular um, course might be tagged induction, for example. And it now means that every single user who does a search on induction is going to have this come up as a recommended course because it's about induction. So that's sort of how tags work and what their function is around there. Now, once we're done, we can literally click save and return. And this is going to take me back to my course and category management page. And as you can see, under induction in the 2018 folder, I now have my one induction 2018 course. Now, just like to open up this folder, I clicked on the 2018 and it opened up that folder on the right hand side. If I click on the name of the course, the page reloads and depending on your screen size, you might think nothing's actually happened. But once I've actually clicked on that course name, if you scroll down a bit, I now have all the details about the course in a third window that opens up. Now, the main reason why people use this is this is the easiest way to then quickly get into that course. I can literally click on view and it will take me straight back into that, uh, straight into that course um, through there. I can also enroll users directly from this screen as well, as well as a few other functions that you can see there. So they're just, I just want to explain that functionality so you know where it's going and what's actually happening. Now, also through this course and category management, this is where I can hide an individual course. So when we built categories earlier on, we talked about hiding categories, but here I can also hide courses, I can delete courses, and I can also edit the settings of a course. So if for any reason you accidentally messed up what we just did, that's fine, doesn't matter. Simply come back here, click on the edit icon, like so, and when the page loads, it takes me back through here. So I can now change this and I can now play around. So if, for example, I forgot to turn completion tracking on, I can come back in here and correct whichever function that I wanted to. Um, once I'm finished, go to save and return, and I'm done. So that's your first course built. I'm gonna click on save and display, it's going to drop me straight into the course and I'm ready to start building.